Hey everybody, welcome to another of my 6th edition Tyranid overviews. Today we're talking about one of my favorite units in the game. You know, I like the Exocrine. He blows the snot out of things. I like the Horror Specs. I guess he eats the snot out of things. But, for pure fun, the Moloch. The Moloch is the way to go. Three of these things, if you can do it. Two, preferably, I guess, for most people. And here's why. Well, at first, it's a monstrous creature. Yeah, we all know that. Weapon skill, three. No ballistic skill. Okay. Strength, six. Toughness, six. Wounds, six. Initiative, four. Not three. Uh, three attacks. Leadership, eight. So... Even though they describe it as a stupid creature, apparently it's smart enough. And finally, once again, for the coup de grace, saving throw, 3+. plus. This guy is a beast. Now, <laughs> I looked at this and I said, why, why, did they, why, did they, why did they give him all of these, you know, little upgraded stats? Not from, I mean upgraded from the standard Tyranid in this 6th edition codex, not all codexes. And I know why. Because from now on, if the people see you have Molochs, that's going to be their primary target. Everybody's going to want to shoot this thing. Uh, if you want to imagine a Moloch, just think one of the sandworms from Dune. And now they pretty much gave it the sandworm attack. So you're going to imagining large mouths opening up under the ground and just consuming entire units into it. At least that's how I imagine it. And it's just, it's just, whew. this thing's wipe out units better than any other model that I've tried so far. The Exocrine with its, you know, Assault 6 Stream Blast um, is good. And, and then, you know, the horror specs with running in and eating the entire units, that's good too. But both of those things are set aside compared to the Moloch's Terror from the Deep. That's what I'm going to focus on in this video more than any other tactic. I'm just going to get straight to that. Terror from the Deep is a deep strike. So uh, it's not even really an attack per se. It's a deep strike. It happens in the movement phase. And you want to basically land on top of a unit. That's your goal. You want to... <laughs> You want to land on top of the unit. Uh, you, you, you ignore impassable terrain and things like that. So basically, if you, if you land on impassable terrain, you just move it to the edge of the impassable terrain. You don't mishap. So uh, this is a good thing because many units, when they set up, they tend to set up next to some impassable terrain, some rock wall, some, something like that, which is great because that means it lowers the chance of you deviating off of the unit. Because if you if you if you can actually just place the Moloch and say I want to do I want to uh, on the impassable terrain and then move him to the edge, if you can understand what I mean, uh, and and so you just move him to the edge and then you put him right on top of the unit there, or you can just aim to ha land on top of the unit. This is also where the synergy with the Lictors and the Death Leapers come in when you don't want deviation. Once you have established that the Moloch lands on top of a unit, you place a large blast marker over where he comes in. And you hit everything underneath it with a strength 6 AP2 blast. That simple. Oh, which ignores cover saves, obviously. Strength 6 AP2 blast. You resolve it right then and there in the movement phase <clears throat> and see if he can come onto the table uh, over an inch away from any of, <laughs> any of the surviving units, if there are any. Okay, let's say there is. Let's say you decided to place your template over a Terminator unit and uh, one survives. I don't know. There was an HQ there, your champion, your wolf lord, your orc boss, your whatever. It survived. Um, you do it again. Place another 
Ordnance Blast, do another Strength 6 AP2 hit, and this time see, did anything survive? Now, like I said, when I was going up against a, uh, a Tau Pathfinder unit that was buried inside of a forest, it was pretty easy to say nothing survived. Just didn't. It's just, it's just a thing of beauty. You can just imagine the entire forest being subsumed into the maul of the Moloch and everything in time going, ah, I'm being eaten. It was fun. It just wiped out the whole unit. I mean, it's just gone. It's, it, it's just gone. Try the dice rolls yourself against any standard troop unit. Two, strength six, AP two, ordnance blast hits in a row on the same spot. How many things survive that? Not many. <clears throat> His next ability then is Burrow. Burrow basically turns him into a kind of pseudo flyer. He can just after and after turn two or. I say, should say, beginning turn two, he can just take himself off the board and put himself into ongoing reserve. And then do that again next round. Uh, this is where his hit and run ability comes into play to allow him to get out of combat and then go into reserve. So you leave combat on your opponent's assault phase, and then when it becomes your turn, in your movement phase, you just take him off the table. And he's in ongoing reserve. That's how he gets out of harm's way. Just whoop, gone. Just back into the ground. And then the turn after that, on your turn again, he pops back up someplace else with um with another with another terror from below. Now by that turn, at that time you should be in like turn four, turn five. And you should either have, you know, tunnels from the Turvigan or, or your lictors should have come in and moved up to some strategic place so that he's non-deviating. And boom, when he doesn't deviate, you just place the things right on top of the units. It's brilliant. It's brilliant. You got, mm, thank you, Games Workshop for this one it is just so fun um <clears throat> see let's see what else does he do quickly uh he's fearless so you don't care about his instinctive behavior in signups range because you ignore the one and two role um obviously i already said he has deep strike and he has hit and run which is brilliant the other good thing is he has access to all of the biomorphs and you know i've gone into those in many of my other videos that means you can give him acid blood you know that one where if you come up and assault it every time he takes a wound at that initiative step immediately that unit takes a strength five ap2 hit to itself every time they hit him you can give him regeneration, which means he gets a wound back on a four plus at the <laughs> next round. Okay. <clears throat> you can, oh, you can give him prehensile tail. And he gets the choice of prehensile pincer attack, which is not bad, but he gets my favorite, which is toxin spike for 10 points, which gives him a poison two plus poison attack and with his at, his being at strength six that means that if he hits anybody of a toughness six and below he re-rolls the wound it's just brilliant so you can imagine this he he's got his own poison attacks he's going to have toxins uh bleh, toxin spike which gives him just an additional poison attacks. That that right there pretty much gives him um, four attacks. If he assaults, he's going to get the Hammer of Wrath and a plus one attack there too. So you're talking about six, six attacks. Six attacks. On top of his Ordnance Blast. Of course, there'll be a turn delay, but ah, if you have him in range with your flying Hive Tyrant, uh, like I said before, and, and you can hit him with an Onslaught, then he can uh, run. Um, 
He doesn't shoot, actually. So I guess that doesn't matter. Uh, never mind about the onslaught. But, yeah, I thought he could have had flesh hooks for a second. But now that I'm thinking about it, he doesn't get flesh hooks or spines. So I thought maybe you could hit him with the onslaught and then they could assault and shoot that out and not. But now that I'm thinking about it, he doesn't get those. Either way, I love this guy. And I think you're going to love him too. So try out the Moloch. I'll make another videos later with more tactics on him, which I've used. And I look forward to seeing you again with my next video. Have fun.